Had a great weekend. Went to the Moody Blues concert. They sing some of my old favorites, Questions, Tuesday Afternoon, Nights in White Satin. I think that's the greatest love song in rock and roll history. Of course, my son, he thinks Pearl Jam's Black rivals that in terms of the passion. I'd be curious to know what some of you think. It's the greatest love song in rock and roll. In the Christian world, the song Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound That Saved a Wretch Like Me, that would be considered one of the great love songs. God who loves us in spite of our brokenness and sinfulness. Now, I have to confess that I have friends who chastise me for listening to rock and roll. Uh, it's a tool of the devil, Elvis shaking his hips, the themes of drugs and sex that dominate the music, the immoral lifestyle of uh, many of the rockers. Uh, it, sh it shouldn't be something that a Christian's part of. You know, I was on YouTube the other day, and they had a preacher with a blaring microphone blasting all the people at a Switchfoot concert, telling them they're in dangers of the fires of hell for listening to this band. And I thought it was kind of ironic, because Switchfoot's basically a positive band. It's not like ACDC, who was celebrating being on the highway to hell, which incidentally, the lead singer, after singing that a few times, died. Not too many months later. <clears throat> Not saying he was on the highway to hell, but a little ironic. But nevertheless, I I've always kind of felt that music was in the category of art, like nature or paintings. In fact, when I hear a love song, often it just directs me to the one I love the most. And for me, a pastor would be God. Now, of course, not all love songs fall into this category. you got Marvin Gaye's songs, and they really don't <clears throat> apply in that direction. But taking this a little deeper, I think anything that has access to our souls and our core feelings is something that we ought to ponder. I mean, what else do we let into our souls? What movies, what friendships, what influences... I mean, to be honest, in this world, it's hard to keep out things that wither us from within. You know, the darker elements of life find their way into us, and that's kind of why God wants to be the guardian of our souls. He wants to heal any damage that things have done to us, and He wants to redirect our energies and our thoughts, anything that's unhealthy for us. And this leads us back to music. Um, I was surprised to learn that a high percentage of people categorize music as the fourth most important priority in their life. Uh, apparently when we sing that song, it has this way of echoing in our heads and souls the rest of the day. Which raises the question, what do we fill our heads with? Because it's going to determine what kind of day we have. Garbage in means garbage out. You know, if we are angry and worrying and focusing on all the injustices that have happened to us, well, it's going to skew our perspective and our experience in life. You know, the Bible says, whatever's excellent and pure and worthy, dwell on these things. Put positive thoughts in your head. Bring the energy of God into your life. That's why I always start my day off with God. You know, there's a secret that this 15th century kitchen monk, Brother Lawrence, taught. It's practicing the presence, where you get up in the morning and you spend time thanking God for all that's going right. Then you lay before him the things that you're worried about, the challenges you imagine you're going to deal with. And then you get empowered to go forward and have a fantastic day. And that's what I want for you. I want you to sing a good song. I want you to have a good talk with God. In fact, I want you to have a God day.